Hey, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv. We've seen how to use Xcode a little bit with a real project. Now I want to take you through the steps to create that project so that you can make your first iPhone app. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a brand new Xcode project. Now there's two ways you can do this, and I'm going to show you them both so that if you don't see this screen, you know what you're doing. So the first thing, I'm going to highlight my mouse here, is you can go to File, New, and then project. So a project is how you make a new app. Generally, you create one new project for every app that you make, and you can get started with that. So when you think of an app, create a new project, and that's where you'll do all your coding, your, all your interface design to get started. So we can click this button, and you'll always see this from the Xcode toolbar under File, New. The other option is if you see this screen when you first open up Xcode, so when you click on the icon over here, if you pin this to your dock, we have this options keep in dock. That will keep it always in the right side. So it's easy to find and, and open, or you can open it other ways. So what you can do right here is just create a new Xcode project. And in here, the first thing you're going to look for is this iOS. So we're going to target iOS because we want to make an iPhone or an iPad app. Then you can go and drill into just application these are going to be the, the most popular things that people use. I always like to start with a single view application because it's the, the easiest place to start. So this will get you up and running real quick. It's just a bare bones iPhone app with one screen and we'll just hit next. All right. So once we're here, we have to give it a name. So it says product name. This is just like the app name. So just put in whatever you want here and we're going to do birthday in days. So that's what the, the app is going to be. It's about calculating how old I am in days. And I'm just going to tell it my birth date. So I'm just going to plug that in. I was born on X day or whatever. And then it'll spit out you are 3000 days old or something like that. So organization name, just use your name here uh, for this organization identifier. You can put any value here. Apple recommends the reverse website. So I have paulsolt.com, but you don't need to do that. You can just put any unique value here. It's just, it could be your name. So just go ahead and get started. You only need to worry about this when you are trying to put it on a real device. So that's going to match whatever you do when you sign up with Apple for the $99 a year developer account that allows you to either sell your app on the app store or test on a real device. Now you'll see a unique bundle identifier. This just needs to be a, uh, a string of text that is going to uniquely identify your app and it needs to be different from any other app on the App Store. Next, you'll select a language. So here we have the option between Swift or Objective-C. We're going to go with Swift because that's what we're teaching. And then you can do different devices, iPad, iPhone, or Universal. I'm going to stick to iPhone and then hit Next. Here I have a project folder on my desktop. So if you go to my desktop, you'll see that I have a few folders here. Projects is where I do all of my development when I'm just testing out different things. And so I'll just go in here. You can see I've got a ton of projects here. So I'll just create this. You have the option to do a Git repository. For your first project, I probably wouldn't do that. I just create it so that you can just get started without thinking about everything and sort of focus on just learning the basics. So we're going to create that. That's going to create our project. We're going to see our sidebar here. Now, you'll notice this is different from the previous video. We have the .swift extension, which means that these are Swift code files. This looks a little bit different, but it still has a lot of the similar content from the Objective-C app. So ViewController.swift is where our screen is going to start. The app delegate allows us to know when the app is getting launched, when it's being put into the background mode, when it's being terminated, when it's starting up again. So these are just hooks so that your application can save data or load data when appropriate. And then in view controller, this is gonna, this is a code file associated with the current screen. So when I say current screen, I mean what you look at when you first open the app. And in here we have our main storyboard. So main.storyboard is our user interface file. And in here, this is really big. So we have this canvas here, and I can't see anything because of the size of my screen. So Xcode's got this new sizing class. You'll see that this doesn't look like an iPhone. It doesn't look like an iPad. It's kind of just like a square shape. So let's look and see how big this is. 
All right, so this is a 600 by 600. There, there's no device like that. So this, for me, is a little bit confusing. And so what I like to do, at least just to get started with an iPhone app, is I want to see something that's going to look like an iPhone app. And in Xcode, there's this new thing called sizing classes. You can do this weird thing where it down here, it'll tell you what it's for. And this is really what more like what an iPhone looks like, but it's still not quite the same size. So what I'm going to show you is how to work around this. We're actually going to disable this. This is a new thing in, in Xcode 6. I'm going to turn off size classes. There's going to be a big warning. It's okay. You're just going to hit disable size classes. And now we're going to see something that looks like an iPhone interface. And it's going to have the dimensions that you would expect if you're coming from an iPhone 5 or 5S. So this is 320 points wide and 568 points tall. So it's pretty tall. We can also look at how it looks when we actually run this. So right now we have a blank app and we can just get started by hitting the play button. And now we have our app running. So it started up, we didn't tell it to do anything. We didn't add anything to the screen. This is just the basic app running. And so what we can do here is just drag out some user interface controls. So I wanna call this something related to how many days alive I am. And I need to get the user to give me their birth date. So the first thing I'm gonna put here is a birth date label. And let's make it a question. So I'll put that at the top. Now to edit this, you just double click and you can start typing and then click off and then you're done. So then once you place it, you can see these grid marks for the, the things to align to. We can center align it and along the top. If I were to run this right now, you would see birth date at the very top. It's not interactive because it's just a label. So let's throw on a button here and we'll just center align this somewhere down here. And we'll call this one calculate. That might not be super friendly. So we might want to change it. Um, maybe we want to say something like how many days old am I? So you can write a, a bigger thing. It's going to create a bigger button. You're going to need to recenter it. And now if we run this again, you'll be able to see that this is interactive. So when I tap on this with my finger, it's causing the, the button to press. Now, normally when this type of thing happens, you want to do an action. And we don't have an action hooked up yet. We'll learn about that in a second. The, the next thing that we need is also a way to get text input. So let's drag out some of these text labels here. Now, I didn't explain this fully over here. You're probably looking at something that looks more like this. So down in this sidebar, what we're working with is this utility panel. And this is where we can get any user interface element. So you can hide and show the utilities panel here and then what we're looking for is actually this little square with a circle in it. Sorry, this square inside of a circle. Um, this looks different than the, the icon that we had in Xcode 5. And it's the third one in. So this is the one you need to look for. Now, if you don't see this, it's because it's along the bottom. And all you have to do is tap this to make it pop up. And then you have two view modes. You have a list view and then you have a grid view. Once you understand what the components are, you can use the grid view. When you're first starting out, you might not know what you're looking for and you want to sort of see what options there are. This will explain them and alternatively you can search. So if we're looking for something like the text field, we have two different options. We have the text field and the text view. We're going to use a text field for just a single data input and that's going to allow us to just drag this out onto the screen. So now we have these three panels here and I can sort of center them a little bit I can move them around. If I hold the shift button, I can click on new things and just move stuff around. So here we have the birth date. Now what I'm going to want is the label. So I'm going to hit the X down here. Let's switch back to a grid view by hitting this button. And let's look for our label. We're going to want a label right here. And this is, I'm going to put days or day. And then center that just by dragging it over. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to make you more productive. If you used Photoshop or Sketch before, you can normally duplicate something really quick. And the same is true with Xcode's interface designer. So if I hold the option key or the alt key, I can click and drag over and we can duplicate this label without having to reach over here to configure it. So if you already have some content, that's a, a quick way of doing something like this. So here I'm going to do, let's go month, day, and then year. 
So I'm just going to change this one. Now, depending on where you're from, you might write a date in a different way. Uh, this is how we do it in America. So I'm just going to go with that right there. Now, this is going to be where we enter our date. So let's see what happens when we run this. Now we click in here. Now with a keyboard, I can type here. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that we don't see a keyboard down here. And there's actually a hardware mode to turn on and off the, the software keyboard or the hardware keyboard. And there's a short key called, uh, that's Command K. That's going to turn on the keyboard. So think keyboard and then just type Command or Apple K. That's going to make the keyboard turn on and off so that it's going to look like what happens when you have an iPhone. Now, the only reason why the the keyboard isn't there when you first start the app is because sometimes when you have a Bluetooth keyboard attached to your iPhone, you don't see the you don't see the software keyboard. So that's one thing to think of when you're doing something like this. If you don't see the keyboard, just use the numbers on your keyboard on your Mac and you'll be good to go. And if you do want to try a virtual keyboard, you can just press Command K and then it pops out. And to get numbers, you just click here. And we can change this to something like seven. All right, now if I hit return, the keyboard is not going to go away. So that's something that you'll have to actually code. And I'll show you in uh, another video I make when we talk about the keyboard in more detail. All right, so one more thing that we need to do is we need a, a way to output this. Right now, we have the, the stuff to connect and get user input. We have a button so that we can cause an action so that we can update something but we don't have a way to display it on the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag another label out onto the screen. And for this, we're gonna to have to do a, a longer label. So here we're gonna have our message. And you could just do a short label like this, but if you had a message that was bigger than the seven characters we have here, it's gonna get clipped. And so what we'll do here is we'll just drag this from one side to the other, and that will make it so that we have a big message and then I'll want to center it. So we'll use some of the, the options that we have here on the utility panel. So once you have your label here, just select it so that it's highlighted like this and then select the fourth tab here. This is the attributes inspector. Here you can change the font size. You can change if it's centered or right or left aligned and some other attributes about your message. So if we stop the app and rerun it, we're going to see the new screen that we now have and it's going to have all of this information. Now, for me, it's a little bit uh, cluttered here with these labels. So I'm going to just select these by left clicking and dragging and then drag this down a little bit. We'll get the recommended distance away. And we can also change this font. Uh, let's get rid of the question mark and we'll change this to a system bold font. So if you select this little T button here, you can change the font to a, a custom font or you can just go with the bold font. And then sometimes you'll get clipping. So one of the solutions for that is there's a size to fit content. That's the command equal sign. So if you just do that, it'll resize and then you can recenter it so that it fits in the right spot. So that's a little bit about getting started. We've designed the interface. In the next video, I'm gonna take you through some of the code that's going to make this interface come alive.